next look into another very advanced microcontroller which is known as ARM microcontroller and it is one of the very popular ones because of the fact that uh, it, it, in many of the devices that you find today many of the mobile phones uh, then cameras and all that where particularly the power is a concern so we want to go for low power operation at the same time we want to achieve very high uh, speed of operation so those cases these uh, arm processors have become very popular and you will see that it has got many interesting features that uh, makes this processor design very unique in that sense and uh, we can uh, we can uh, use it uh, as per our requirement so unlike uh, say 8051 or 8085 or the other processors that we have discussed where the, this entire chip we, we always have to use in case of arm we will find that there are way outs like if you do not need a certain portion of the, the uh, of the device so you can turn off those portions so you, you in your chip you may not include those portions and you can have a chip which is just uh, catering to your requirement but still following the philosophy of arm so we will look into this uh, microcontroller so this 80 uh, sorry this arm microcontroller is a 32 bit risk architecture so uh, risk architecture means that reduced instruction set computers so it's a 32 bit processor so this is already understood unlike say 8051 or 8085 which are 8 bit processors so if you look into this uh, 32 bit processors so uh, sorry so the 32 bit processor means the the internal data on which it operates so is it's uh, is 32 bit now we have got uh, this processors so if you classify then there are two major classes so that on on the basis of the instruction set that we have one is called uh, the CISC processor or complex instruction set computers and another is called the risk processor or reduced instruction set computers so this is complex instruction set computers uh, and this one is the risk is the reduced instruction set computer so this is stands for the reduced instruction set computers so what is the major difference between the two the point is that as a processor designer so uh, you can design new processors you can design advanced processors you can think about the instructions that you have in that processor and those instructions may be very very complex in nature okay but uh, when uh, when is this where is this processor going to be utilized so this processor is going to be utilized when you have written a program in some high level language suppose i have written a program in c language and then that C language program, so I am translating and that translation, that translation leads me to the corresponding machine code. And in this uh, machine code, I have got the instructions given in the processor. So who is doing this translation? So this translation is done by the tool called compilers. This is done by the tools called compilers. Now, for this compiler uh, development process in some sense you can see that every instruction that you have in this uh, high level language program, so that is getting converted into a set of instructions into this machine language program. So, you can say that every instruction of this high level language uh, statement, high level language program will get converted into a set of machine language programs, machine language statements. So, given this job, so if uh, in some sense uh, I can say that the job is similar to a problem like this that suppose we are you are given an area, okay, a rectangle, rectangular area is given and you are given some patterns, okay. So, you are given some uh, say uh, some rectangular patterns. So, maybe this pattern then say you have got say this pattern, then you have got say this small pattern. So, you are, you are given a and a number of such patterns are given and your job is to fill up this uh, block using these patterns. So, using these patterns, so you have to fill up these blocks. Now, if I try to fill up, then what will happen is suppose I put a big block here, then this part, this remaining part, I may not find a suitable block. So, I put a block which is something like this. 
and then this is the wasted part and later on I will cut it off fine. So, in some sense I can say that if this big rectangle that I have drawn, so if this is the program for which I am trying to generate the code and these templates that I have, so they are considered to be the machine instructions, then as if I am trying to cover this uh, my program logic by means of these rectangles, the by these uh, instructions. But some of the instructions are complex and some of the instructions are simple. But I uh, to um, uh, to make it, uh, but I co could not find an exact match. So I uh, for this part of the calculation, so I use this instruction, and maybe uh, uh, some of the uh, operands of this instruction I make them zero, so that this part does not have any meaning for my program. Okay, so this way I can do it. So essentially, what is happening is that these instructions are, I am using for that purpose. Now consider the other situation where the same problem is given to you, but the blocks that you have they are all of a single size, they are quite small, but they are of all single size. Then you can just uh, do a very nice filling like this, so you can do a nice filling this fashion and it is very much likely that the amount of wastage that you will have will be much less compared to the previous case. So, in case of risk this thing this is what happens now, uh, so in case of risk this individual instructions are like these boxes and this in all these boxes they are similar in nature. So, all the instructions they are uh, similar in nature that the, their sizes are uh, more or less same, their time needed the execution times are more or less same. So, that way all these instructions they are of more or less same size and same uh, duration. Unlike the CISC processors where the instructions are arbitrary uh, are of arbitrary sizes, the, the sizes may vary. For example, uh, if you look into say um, 8086 processor, you will find that the move instruction itself has got sizes from 2 bytes to 6 bytes. So, as a result the execution uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the fetching of that instruction itself will take different amount of time. If you look into the execution of instructions, then some instructions for example, which does uh, a simple shift operation that may take only say 3 cycles, whereas if, if you are taking the multiplication operation, so that is going to take say 60 to 70 cycles. So, that way it uh, depends uh, uh, of depending upon the instruction, the execution time and the size will vary. So, can we do something better? So, uh, previously this processor design team and the compiler design team, so they used to work uh, independently. And then uh, these processor designers they used to come up with complex instructions, but in more many cases those complex instructions are not being used by the uh, compiler designers. So, this risk philosophy came from that point. So, where uh, the compiler designers require the, the instructions to be of equal size and these instructions to be of equal duration, so that we can very easily predict the cost of uh, equation, uh, cost of these instructions and we can very easily predict the uh, size of the uh, resulting program, then the uh, execution time for the resulting program. So, you can tell those things very easily. So, this is, uh, this is the objective with which uh, this uh, risk computers came and one uh, in, in the, the contrasting difference between this uh, CISC and RISC is in terms of the instruction sizes. Another contrasting difference that you will find is in terms of the registers. In case of RISC processors, you will find that the processor has got large number of registers unlike CISC. So, uh, compared to CISC, this RISC processors have got more number of registers that helps in the instruction execution. As we have seen that if the operands of some, oper of some instruction, they are available in the CPU registers, then the execution will be the fastest. So, that way this uh, RISC processor, if it has large number of registers, then uh, the compiler designer can put a number of uh, temporary variables onto those registers and make the system fast, okay? make the design fast. So, this is what is uh, uh, the uh, philosophy behind designing this RISC processor. So, this ARM is a originally proposed to be a 32 bit RISC architecture, it is developed by ARM corporation previously known as Akron RISC machine. It is licensed to companies that want to manufacture ARM based uh, CPUs or SOC products. Uh, 
Now, this is another very interesting thing. So, you will never find any chip whose name is ARM. You will find chips like say 8051, 8085 numbered like that, but you will not find any chip which is named as ARM because this ARM company they do not manufacture any chip. What they do, they do, they make, they do, do the design and that design is licensed to various other companies like you can find NXP, you can find uh, uh, say um, uh, ST Microelectronics, STM series and all that. You can find different series, but none of them will be uh, marked as ARM. So, they have their own processor and they, they are uh, cart, they are uh, modified to suit the requirement that they have. And the f so the ARM based CPU design, so if we can, so the, ARM, the, 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 the soft cores are available in terms of the description. So, you can uh, take that uh, from the ARM uh, by paying the license fee and then you can modify it as per your requirement. So, for system on chip type of design also, the, it is very much useful. Like in system on chip, what happens is that uh, unlike a board based design or PCB based design, where this memory processor. Uh, then other peripherals, so they are put as separate separate chips on the PCB. In case of system on chip design, so entire uh, system is put onto a single silicon wafer. So that way all communications they become on chip communication and the system operates at a uh, higher rate. Okay. But for that matter, you need to get the soft cores from different vendors and then we have to uh, fabricate them onto the chip. So this is good when if you have got ARM type of platform then if you uh, you can uh, you can uh, take the portions of ARM which are meaningful for your case and you can uh, discard the others. So that way you can have uh, good ut utility of the uh, wafer space that you have. Uh, unlike uh, this board based design where if you take uh, say 8051 chip so the entire chip has to be there on the board so you do not have any other option. So, this type of philosophy, so this helps the licensee to develop uh, their own uh, processors compliant with the ARM instruction set architecture. Okay. So, features, so first feature is the ARM cores are very simple and they require relatively lesser number of transistors. So, the cores are made very simple, so if it requires less number of transistors means in the as I said that in the overall silicon wafer you have got a lot of space available for other uh, co other components to be put into. So, there so they, you have got uh, enough space to realize other functionalities of the on the silicon flow. Now, instruction set architecture and pipeline design aimed at minimizing energy consumption. So, this is uh, another important thing. So, instruction set architecture like the instructions that you have the registers and all that and the whole design is a pipeline design and the overall goal is to minimize the energy consumption. So, this power is a very important concern when we have got these embedded applications and that way this uh, uh, power minimization uh, becomes an important issue. So, energy consumption if we can minimize then definitely it is helpful like today if we are buying a cell phone a typical criteria for buying it is the size of the uh, uh, size of the uh, uh, phone ok. And in that in that size, so uh, that size uh, one part is the display, so we want uh, reasonably large display, but at the same time another uh, part of it is the battery. So, you will find that the battery size is not uh, re reducing at the same rate at the cir other circuitry of the design. So, if you put a smaller sized battery means the system will not be able to uh, cater will not, not be able to run for a long time without recharge. So, if you can have this power consumption low that means you can have this uh, battery size reduced or you can uh, you, you can increase the, uh, uh, the time after which you recharge the device. Also, this ARM processor they are capable of 16 bit thumb instruction set. So, there are unlike other processors ARM processor has got two instruction set one is the uh, one instruction set is called ARM which is a 32 bit instruction set another instruction set is called thumb which is a 16 bit instruction set. So, the major advantage that you gain by having a 16 bit instruction set over a 32 bit is that your memory is organized as 32 bit word. So, if you are accessing the memory, so in one access you are getting two instructions now. 
so that way it becomes uh, uh, so the number of memory accesses can be reduced it can be halved and in one access you are getting two instructions so that that's how the whole operation can be made faster and this uh, transitions on the buses will also be less so you don't have to do so many memory accesses so this bus activity will also be low as a result power consumption will also be low performance you can get higher performance because uh, uh, this uh, processors uh, will see that there are many interesting design features that makes the processor uh, um, uh, faster modular architecture so modular architecture means that the entire design it is it can be divided into uh, sub modules and as per your requirement so you can tell that i need this module or i don't need that module so you can uh, take that module uh, for example you can find that the security so uh, this arm processor the advanced version they even have got the security modules built into it so if you don't need the security modules for small embedded applications so you do not put those security modules into your operation similarly there are modules that are uh, responsible for signal processing job the dsp algorithms will be running better there so for your case you may not be requiring the dsp uh, algorithms to be running there so you can ignore those uh, dsp um, uh, sub modules so that way uh, the, uh, you can, you, it is modular architecture so you can select the uh, set of modules that you need for your design the only mandatory part is the integer pipeline so the the the, the part of the system that does the integer operation so that part is mandatory so uh, so you, you any uh, the integer instructions uh, will be executed so the addition subtraction multiplication division with integers so that part will be there others are all optional so you may or may not use it another very interesting feature that this arm processor has is the built in jtag port so this built in jtag port so this is used for in circuit emulation so let me just uh, clarify this what is it say suppose i have uh, suppose i am developing some application okay so this is the application code that i have written in some uh, in, in some uh, microcontroller in some microcontroller programming language i have written it okay and this is developed sitting on a pc so this is a pc on which i am sitting and i have developed my uh, program there so this is a pc on which i have developed my program and then uh, so this program is there so uh, this pc or this uh, personal computer it will it can have a simulator for the it can have a simulator for the microcontroller and i can simulate this program and check whether this program is running correctly or not okay whether it is giving me the desired values and all that after that so normally the situation is like this that there is a, a development platform development board onto which we can download this uh, compiled program once we are satisfied with the simulation that my program is working correctly so i can download this program and now on this uh, once it once the program has been downloaded then i can take this system out and this is this can act as the standalone system where uh, for example if i am doing a traffic light controller example so here after doing the simulation i find it is fine it is working fine so i download this program via some downloading mechanism and then i take this uh, system to the uh, uh, road and there i install it and try to run the traffic light controller program now the difficulty is that while doing that it may uh, so the the program when i am simulating so it is working fine but when i have downloaded onto the actual chip actual say 8051 microcontroller it may not be working correctly why that microcontroller itself might have some fault developed for example uh, it has got that a register that a register may be one particular bit of it say bit number 4 of it is permanently 1 or permanently 0 so we cannot change that bit so that bit is always 1 okay so naturally that um, uh, that microcontroller will not be able to uh, run this program correctly because for the a register the bit is always that particular bit is always one so in simulation you cannot catch this error because in simulation so everything is running on the pc only so you cannot do anything 
but when, when you have downloaded it onto the target and then you are trying to see whether it is running correctly or not, you may find that it is not running correctly and you need to find out the reason like why is it not working correctly. And for that matter, you if you suspect that the A register might be having some problem, you need to see the content of A register. Now how do you do that? There must be some mechanism by which this PC will be able to talk to this processor now and it will be able to uh, get the content of various registers within it for and check the value. So, this is exactly uh, what is uh, meant by this in circuit emulation sort of thing. So, there is a JTAG port, uh, in fact uh, many of these advanced processors they now have this JTAG port they, that is for the debugging purpose and we have got uh, this in circuit emulator. So, then you can uh, this, uh, this, this will allow programs to download and full and full uh, downloaded and fully debugged in system that when the system is operating. So, you can uh, take a snapshot of various registers through this mechanism ICE mechanism and you can then try to analyze that what is the problem. So, this is very in important feature when you are de designing embedded application using this uh, uh, using some uh, development platform like some PC. A, a quick look at the brief history of this ARM processor. So, it started in 1985 as a 26-bit uh, commercial uh, risk, first commercial risk, so 26-bit, so that was, that was called ARM 1. In 87, the version 2 came with the coprocessor support. So, that the processor, so it was implemented in ARM 2, ARM 3 type of processors. Then in 1992, we get the version 3. So, that has 32 bit processor now okay. and th there is a memory management unit, then there is a multiply accumulate unit. So, that has been introduced. So, that is useful for mainly for the signal processing applications and the very implementations are ARM 6, ARM 7 like that. Then it in uh, 1996 the version 4 came. So, that is that had the thumb instruction set. Okay. And then the along with ARM, so we have got the thumb instruction set as well and the implementations we have this ARM 7 TDMI, ARM 8, ARM 9, strong ARM. So, these are various implementations that are available for this so that has got the thumb instruction set. 1999, we have got this DSP and uh, Zazel extensions. So, these are some additional co-processing facilities and available in ARM 10 processors. Then we have got this 2001 SIMD thumb 2, so another extended version of thumb instruction set thumb 2 came. Then for security this trust zone came, then this multiprocessing facilities came. So, these are uh, they, they are available in ARM 11 and uh, uh, type of processors. Then uh, we have got after that the ARM developed three different profiles. So, for the server side they have got uh, ARM uh, this uh, they have got this A series. So, then for the microcontrollers they have M series and for real time processing there are R series that way there are three different profile scheme and many other additional features like say uh, this uh, security and this floating point operation features they got introduced. So, that way it is now operating. So, right now the version of ARM that we have for microcontroller operation are this Cortex series and Cortex M3, M4 type of processors. So, that are the uh, current versions that we have. So, we will look into this ARM architecture, why is it uh, so interesting, why is it, uh, why is it uh, may be better than many of the existing processors. So, if you look into the block diagram, then uh, the, this is the thing that okay, you can have uh, this, uh, um, there is uh, I should say, um, I, will, I will start with the ALU. So, there is a 32 bit ALU that is there. And there is a register bank that has got 31 32 bit registers plus 6 status registers. So, I said that this is a risk architecture and it is a uh, register uh, uh, reach architecture. So, you see there are 31 32 bit registers plus 6 status registers that way there are a large number of registers. Then ALU is 32 bit and so for operation so you can have one data coming through this A bus to this ALU another data can come either from this register or can, can come from this uh, uh, memory 
through this uh, this or from the instruction is um, through this one and that is that we generally call the b bus and there is a barrel shifter put before this ale so barrel shifter is used for shifting the uh, bits of the operand so in one instruction so you can send the first operand directly second operand you can say that the second operand is actually shifted by some bits like if you want to do an operation say say x equal to x plus y left shifted by 2 bits okay so if normal processor first of all you have to do a shift shift uh, shift, uh, shift left y and then we have to say like add x comma y so two instructions will be needed but in case of uh, arm processor so you can simply say add so you can simply say like add x comma y comma shl hash 2 so something like this so this will mean that the second operand so it will be left shifted by two bits and then only the addition will be done by a single instruction we can do this thing so this is another so this barrel shifter being on top of this um, uh, alu so this helps in the in this process okay so apart from that we have got uh, say this other interesting point to note is the ale signal is there so ale signal in case of other processors that we have seen so they were going out from the processor because that was used for demultiplexing the address data bus but here the purpose of ale signal is just other is some something else here the if the memory chip is slow so it can request the processor to keep the address on the address bus so accordingly it can raise the ale signal so that the processor will keep the content of this address register available on the ale on the on this address bus till this ale signal is high so this ale direction is towards the processor unlike uh, previously what we had was ale was coming out from the processor going to the out, uh, other other control uh, to the memory chips 